So you've already made a training video and you've synced your screen recordings to your voiceover. You finished the video. But your client now asks that you change a small part of the video because they've made an update to their website and now the screen recording needs to reflect that change. It's just a small section and you don't want to have to redo the entire video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a section of your screen recording, making sure everything still syncs properly to the voiceover. It's not as hard as you think, so let's get into it. If you want to learn more about Camtasia, I live stream every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. You don't have to be a channel member or be subscribed to my channel to join. My live streams are open to anyone. But if you do subscribe, you'll be notified when I post new videos or when I'm about to go live. So I hope to see you Tuesday and now back to this video. So here I am in my sample project and as you can see, I've already got the voiceover and the screen recording synced together. Okay, and I ran through how to do that in a previous video and I'll leave a link to that video above as well as in the description below. But now I've heard from the client and found out that there's a problem with this video. And specifically, there was a section in the video and let me just go find it here, right here. This section here doesn't look the way it looks now. So they made an update to their website uh, and uh, this section changed. So. Uh, email is no longer the, the first choice. And when you drop down the choices here, um, you know, there's only two choices here. There should be more. Okay. So they wanted me to redo the, the video to reflect that change, but I don't want to redo the entire video. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. But before I get started, I just want to let you know that I've opened this project and I've saved it as a different file name. So if you look up top here, it says sample project two. So I highly recommend that when you do revisions, especially for clients, but also for yourself, uh, just to keep things straight in your head. <laughs> um, whenever you do a revision after the fact, I would save it as a different file name, add the number two or revision one or something uh, to show that you've made the change. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, kitty. Sorry. And uh, that way you'll know which is the most recent one. And you can also look back to see what changes you made. Okay, so I've already saved it under a different file name. And so now let's do a couple of cleanup things. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna get rid of these markers because I don't need those. I usually just add markers to help me line things up in the timeline, uh, especially when I'm syncing things together. Uh, but I'm gonna use them in this case to help me identify which section I need to replace. So now let's identify exactly what I need to replace. So. It's basically everything, once I hit that reset password button, once I click that right here, this page here is wrong. So I'm going to, and that actually, if we zoom in here, that actually occurs before this little split here. Okay, so I'm gonna need to replace it right at this point. So I'm going to drop a marker right there. Okay, that's gonna be the start of what I need to replace. And now let's just scroll over here all that I need to replace right up to there, actually. Right up until that point there. So that will will change this, but then everything after that is fine. Okay, so let's drop another marker here. Okay, so now you need to re-record that section. I've already done that. And, uh, and if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I talked about, we're going to do this later. And I never did it in that video. That video ended up being over 40 minutes long. So I thought that was enough. <laughs> this one will be much shorter. Here is that other recording that I did. And I did it on the very next day. You can see that these three recordings were done on 529, May 29th. Uh, and then this one was May 30th. So this is the one, this is the screen recording. Let's click that and drag it down here and place it somewhere over those two markers. Okay, so now that's what we need to replace. So now, once again, let's just, let's hide this for a second. Let's remind ourselves what it looked like. So it's the request password button. That scene is good until it disappears. That validating sign comes up briefly before we switch there. Okay, so now let's go back to this one and let's look at, so there, there it is, there it is showing me clicking the reset password and the validating. So you may want to zoom right in and, and edit almost by a frame by frame basis. 
I mean, it doesn't matter if you get it exactly right because once I click over to this page, it looks like I stay there for quite a while before I start moving the, uh, the cursor. So let's just pick a point here once I'm already on that page. So that is the start of the good copy. So I'll highlight that. I'll press S to split the clip, highlight the beginning part and delete that. Okay. That is the beginning of the good part of my clip. Okay. So I'm going to drag that back and put that right up against the marker, just like that. Okay. And then once again, let's hide that and remind ourselves, what is it that we need to capture? So the mouse cursor goes up there, drops down, selection, selection, and then click request code. And that's it. So I want to go until I click request code and I see, and that basically disappears like that. So, okay, let's unhide this. Just move this over a bit and let's go find where we get to that point. Right here. So right there it disappears. I am going to highlight that and press S to split it and we'll delete that section. Okay, so now this is our good section, okay? Now you can see it's longer than what we need it to be. We only need it to go between this marker and that marker. So how do we make it shorter? We add a clip speed. So we right click and we'll click add clip speed and we'll drag this handle, this clip speed handle here, click and drag it over until it snaps onto that marker there. Okay. And incidentally, if, if yours is not snapping onto the marker, then you would need to go up here to view and just make sure enable timeline snapping is, is checked. Okay. Mine is, so I will just leave that alone. Okay. So now this should be our good copy. All right. And the clip speed ended up being 1.37 times. That doesn't matter. That's kind of arbitrary. Um, but now let's just take a look at this and make sure everything lines up perfectly. Let's put the playhead here and press play. That password. Choose your preferred delivery method. Options include text, voice, email, and more. Once selected, press request code. Okay, so a couple things here. Uh, the timing within there doesn't line up perfectly, so we're going to have to do some splits and some clip speed adjustments to fix that. But also, we have the animation. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but right here, we're, we're already zoomed in, okay, from a previous animation. And then, so at this point, we need to be zoomed in the same amount, right? So the way to do that is we will right click over here on this original clip that is good, right click, and we'll copy the properties. Okay, now we'll put the playhead here and we'll right click and we will paste the properties. Now, as long as you did the recording the exact same way uh, in the same recording box that you did the first time, uh, and that's kind of why I, I strongly recommend having a setup that is repeatable so that you can always do your recordings in the same place. Um, but uh, so if that was done, then this should line up. Let's just take a look, see if it is. Password. That's pretty close. And who's to say it, it's, it's the same or not because it is switching scenes. So I think that looks good. Password. Now the, the mouse cursor does jump a little bit. Okay, so I didn't click in the exact same spot, but we can fix that later on when we make adjustments to the cursor path. And I did a video on that last week. I'll leave a link to that one above and in the description below so you can check that out, how to do that. So that addresses that animation there, but I see down below here there was another animation. And I think that is just a recentering one. Let's hide that track and see what this does. Choose your preferred delivery. Okay, so I just recentered this whole thing and I'm going to want to do that again. And then there's no other animations. In fact, after we fit, uh, go by the end of the new part, um, we could probably just copy the properties from here and paste them up there. So let's go ahead and try that. Well, we'll add an animation, okay, because we want the beginning properties to stay the way they are. So let's unhide this. Let's come up to uh, animations grab a custom animation and drag it down. And let's just put it there, right in the same place it is in the other one. And here, let us right click and copy these properties. That's the properties of the ending spot of that animation. 
And at the ending spot of this new animation, we will right click and paste the properties. Okay. Uh, now that should line up better now. Choose your preferred delivery. And I think the easing is okay. Let's right click and just double check and it's set to auto, which is perfect. So let's just play that through again. At password. Choose your preferred delivery method. Options include text, voice, email. Okay, so that all looks good so far, but the timing is off a little bit. Once it says choose your delivery method, I want the cursor to stay on that spot while I list off the options before it moves. Okay, so let's play this again. Preferred delivery method. At this point, I want it to freeze. Okay, in fact, let's just kind of drag this and find out where I move again, right there. So right before I start to move, I'm going to split this clip and we already have a clip speed attached to this so we can move this over like this that speeds up this this section but let's just see how long I want to well, I want to keep that cursor there I'm going to play this it's going to disappear but just remember that I'm going to extend this frame I just don't know how long I want to extend it for so let's just find that out options include text voice email and more Okay, at that point, I think I, I can have the cursor start to move. So if I drag that back here, before I extend this frame, I just want to check to make sure this does make sense. Once selected, press request. Okay, that happened a little too fast. Once selected, I don't think it needs to happen that fast. Maybe we can drag this back and some of that motion can occur before I finish the list. Voice, email, and more. Once selected, press request code. Okay, I think that probably looks good. So now to extend this, you don't need the playhead at the end. You simply have to press the Option key on a Mac or Alt on Windows, and then you'll get this icon here when you hover over the end. Click and drag it out like this. That just extends that frame. The still frame, it just keeps it on frame for longer. So let me back, I think that should do it. Let's just back up and play this through one more time. Password. Choose your preferred delivery method. Options include text, voice, email, and more. Once selected, press request code. Wait for the six digit. I think that's perfect. Now, one other thing I just wanted to point out. So you may think we're finished and we may well be. In fact, if it were me, I would just leave it like this. Let me just zoom out here. So you can see that we've got these new screen recordings here. Okay, they're over top of the old ones. So. There's really no need to delete the old ones. You can leave them there. They're not going to be seen because they're covered by the new ones. All right. I usually like to leave them there just because that will give me an idea of what I did. Okay. So if the client ever comes back to me and wants me to make another change, I would open up this version, save it as a new version. So if this is revision one, I would save the next one as revision two. Uh, and then I can already see what revision I've already done. Um, and that's just a good way to kind of keep track of all the work that you do. So I would leave it there, but if you want to, you could, you know, make splits at these marker points here, like here and here and delete everything there and drag all this down if you want, but you really don't have to. So that is how I replace screen recordings with new sections when I have to. Do you want more tips like this? Let me know in the comments below or come join me on Tuesdays in my live stream. I live stream every Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. So if you're looking to level up your videos, join me on Tuesdays. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.